Welcome to episode 67 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time, and Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Discussion with the Progressive, Part 2. Follow me on Twitter. You may have seen me mention some of my progressive friends. One in particular is at my house most Friday nights, and we enjoy dinner and drink and many political conversations. It often includes a cigar and sometimes goes into the wee hours of the morning. Our conversations are awesome. Sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. But we both feel that the other frequently makes great points. I asked my friend Steve if he'd be willing to record one of those conversations. He agreed. It ended up being about an hour and a half, shortened only because of a technical difficulty. With that, let's dive in to the second half. And again, this is why I like to refer to the United States as a, it's an experiment. Right. We are an experiment. And it is an ongoing experiment. Um, and when we get it wrong, we're Americans. Right. We used to, at least, when we got it wrong, we used to be willing to admit that and take steps to correct it. Right. And we're less willing to do that because of the politicization of our discourse, the, the black and white. There's no black and white in, in real life. Right. But there is black and white in law. Right. You're either on the right side of the law or you're on the wrong side of the law. Well, and a careful nuance, analysis. Though, that puts you either on, on one, well, one side or the other, right? So it all comes down if, to interpretation if, at that if, point. If I've got a, uh, let's say I'm, I'm running a sex trafficking ring and I've got, um, I've got women imprisoned in my house. And to be right? clear, that's not happening. And, 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 and it is not <laughs> happening. Okay. It is not happening for any number of reasons. The number one reason, because I find that abhorrent and absolutely offensive to the rights of the individual. However, just to make that as an example, because I think it, you know, I, I use that to make it because it makes a very clear example that's, that, that doesn't right. come with all kind of, but what about this? What yeah. About, yeah. It's, so, it's pretty clearly on the wrong side. So if the police show up at my door right, and they say, hey, we've heard that something might be, and I say, nope, there's nothing going on here. Please leave. Thank you. Goodbye. Sure. And then they say, you know what? And they kick in the door and they go rummaging through my house and then they find all kind of evidence, right? Well, there is a possibility that once we get to court, it all gets thrown out, right? That's part of the American Be experiment, the because promise. Because they, I didn't receive due process. Right, the even promise though, is due process. Even though the reality is, you know, even though, you know, there, there was a law that had to be followed, but even though the reality is that in, in this particular scenario, I am actually trafficking women, you know, uh, against their will, which of course is the very definition of trafficking. Right. right? So um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, I think that there's nuance that occurs in the law. So I don't, I don't know that it's always mm. actually black and white, right? Because well, we go to court, the law about trafficking was black and white. I, I was going to say, but I, also, I would, I I would guess, argue like it's not the, it's not the law that has a gray area in this situation. It's the process. Okay. Fair right. Enough. The, the process promises everybody due process. You have a, a fundamental right to be innocent until proven guilty in this country. Okay. And that and you have other rights to privacy, to protection from improper search and right. seizure, to freedom of speech, to to keep and bear arms. You have right. these rights, right? So you would agree then that you might have a law here, but then you have another law that basically I don't want to say supersedes it. It does. It's a, in it, a the sense. Constitution supersedes the laws. Well, I, when I say supersede, that maybe not that that may not be the correct word because, um, but this law takes precedent i guess i guess that would probably be a more appropriate term this law you know the okay, application so, of one law is so applied the, first the, the law here is hey you can't traffic people this law over here says um you can't be held for trial without due process right. and without particular things happening right they need to have a warrant right they need to have some evidence blah 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 all this other stuff right so you have this law that says hey you you know um if this law is broken um, then that means that even though you may have broken this other law for now, you are going to be released and, and, and kind of get away with it, right? And so I think that those situations lead to a right. righteous moral outrage. 
church. Okay. Right? That that some individual through due process was obviously in the wrong, right. obviously doing harm to other citizens right. or even non citizens, right? And and wasn't held accountable to that. And then there's a justifiable moral outrage okay. that comes with that. And then we have this, and in, in the United States, we're a, say what you will about any individual, we are a moral people. We have certain very strong beliefs about how others should be treated. Okay. We have certain very strong beliefs about what our rights are and how they should be applied to us, right? And we also have an expectation that the right thing will be done. We don't accept very easily when the right thing isn't done. Okay. And I think that does lead to the next step is hyperbole from our politicians. And the step after that is pass a new law to account for the situation that we didn't account for before and give law enforcement right. more tools that if traffic, if they think trafficking is going on, they can bypass other elements of the law. And then the courts have to decide, well, is that right or wrong? Right. Right. Um, I think that makes, I think that line of reasoning makes the case for the libertarian argument because for libertarians, and I've long argued this, the ultimate, uh, everything from us is a matter of self-ownership. Right. And I've said, uh, I said in a recent video that I had made, I said self-ownership is the very foundation. Everything else does one of two things. We're talking about that black and white, right? It does one of two things. It either submits or it's in violation of, period. Right. And so when I look at a law, when I look at anything, I say, is it submitting to the idea of self-ownership or is it violating? This is why, for instance, I would support sex workers. Now, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a prude, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I have some reservations about sex work right largely because uh they're largely based on what i think i know and i may be wrong but what i right. think i know of many not the majority necessarily but at least many enough right um many women that are in sex work right and that they're uh that they in some way are i guess for lack of better phrase phrasing broken right sure you know, now that's an easy right? somebody, people, somebody, somebody could argue that. Assume that. Right. Somebody could argue that. And, and I'm not saying that all of them are. I'm not even saying that most of them are. There may be, you know, it could be like 75 percent of them are not and 25 percent are 20. But that's a large. Part right. Of 25. But at the end of the day, I still look and I say before I'm willing to outlaw it for that 25 percent for the sake of the 25 percent, the whole 100 percent is being denied their right of self-ownership. Because your right of self-ownership does not hinge on my perception of whether or not you are broken. Right. And, and, and it's a very vague term. Right. I really hate really using that term, but I don't have a, a better term to use for it, right? So, so it doesn't have it. Same thing for marijuana, for, you know, for drugs. So I look at it and say, hey, you know what? I should be able to – I'm smoking a cigar right now. You're having a cigar with me. Our right of self-ownership says that we can have a cigar if we want. It's our body. We right. can – Puff in the smoke all night long, enjoy it. If it was a, if it was a joint or if it was a bong, right? Whatever. Um, same thing. Or if we wanted to sit here and shoot up heroin, it's our bodies, right? It's it's my body. And then to make it more current, um, vaccines. Sure. It's my body to decide whether or not I get a vaccine. Right. And so the first, like when we were talking about this hierarchy right. of laws. The first law, if you will, it's not really a law, but the first law, the first, um, the the fundamental principle in the libertarian uh, I, I, in libertarianism for me is the right of self ownership. And so when people say, "Well, and, you can get a, you need to get a vaccine to help out other people," right. then I say, "Okay, helping out other people is kind of like a bonus to them, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it is still my body to do what I want with or what I don't want." Right. And without getting into the specifics of a, of a situation, I think my position on that argument, okay, first of all, I agree with it in principle. Self-ownership is, self is important. Um, Self-determination is a fundamental part of how we got started and how this experiment began. 
the problem is is it's based on a premise that I consider to be problematic. And that is that everybody sees it the same way. If everybody held that same principle, that self-determination is a fundamental right and is granted automatically, and that I need to consider your right to self-determination before I take any action, if we all thought that way, if all 320 million of us agreed on that and actually thought that way, then we would not need laws, right? But laws are, laws are, well, we don't exist. think that way on the laws now. Well, th but there's the problem, right? <clears throat> laws exist because not everybody holds the same fundamental principles, right? If let's just take a serial killer, right? Sure. You know, a serial killer is operating outside of the normal bounds of society. Right? In a world with no laws, their right to self determination, where does it stop? Right. Right? And in order to protect the people that might encounter this serial killer, right, we need to have laws that allow us to take this person out of society and put them in a position where they can no longer do any harm. Right? If we didn't have things like, and I, I'm, I know I'm using an extreme example, sure. right? But if we didn't have serial killers, then we wouldn't need laws. But we do. And so right. we need a law. So right? couldn't I say that about self-ownership? If we didn't have a violation of self-ownership, then we wouldn't need a law right. regarding self-ownership. Of but course. Because we do, we should probably have a law. And then following the earlier of examples, shouldn't that kind of rise to the top and say, hey, self-ownership is the pinnacle. Like, like not pinnacle. Well, That's the start. That's where we start. And then everything else bubbles down from there, right? And I think that's the lens by, I think that's one of the lenses that we should view our laws. I do think that, you know, that self determination is, again, a fundamental part of American democracy, right? It's, it's how we got started, the right to determine for ourselves what our future would be. Right. And that extended to the individual citizen in a way that hadn't happened in the world before that. Or if it did, um, you have to go a long way back. Um, so I do think that that's, you know, I'm going to go to de Tocqueville and democracy in America, I believe is where the statement comes from that, you know, I have an individual right to do something and yes, you do have rights, but your right to do something stops where my nose begins. Okay. Right. In other words, <clears throat> you can swing your umbrella freely, I think was actually the example that was used. But when you hit my nose, we have a problem. Right. Right. So. The question is, where does my nose start, right? And that's where we get into laws, right? Does my nose start physically? Is that the only place that it exists? Or if I live on a property that's downstream from another property, does my nose start where I draw water from this, this, this right. stream, right? Um, does my nose start with my larger rights to employment? or my right to have a voice in government, mm -hmm. or my right to, um, to drive a car, right? Where do those rights start and stop? And I think that's why I don't agree with the idea that we can just walk away from laws. It's the same reason that pure communism and pure capitalism don't really work, because the real world doesn't, all those people aren't that way. You have to have a computer, you have to have a robot before those systems would work in their purest form. So there needs to be some... Do you, though? I do think you do. I don't think... You would either have to have a robot or clones or people with a, with a like, ingrained, so like, how... almost, almost brainwashed uh, fundamental position where they so, all automatically agreed, and so that doesn't before, exist. Before we had the idea that robots could be so autonomous and so valuable, right? Mm -hmm. These ideas were already in existence. People were talking about these sure. ideas, right? And, and I, I think I would disagree a little bit on the pure capitalism because capitalism is really just ownership of, prop, uh, ownership of resources, right? Right. And communism tends to be more of a... Um, Shared ownership uh, of all resources. Well, I think that's socialism. I think socialism is more of a shared ownership amongst the the, the crowd. Um, I would argue that socialism and is communism a... is more of a the government is centralized and either owns it or uh, right 
or, 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 well, or basically is yeah is in such power that they might as well own it. I'm not sure. Like socialism is that there's a social contract between all of the people and any one of its people, so that we have a responsibility to hold up all the citizens to a certain standard of living that's expected to be high, right? And that leads to costs for the higher level of citizenry to bring them down, right? I think that's where socialism comes into play. I think communism is a agreed centralized government. The government owns everything, everything, and determines exactly how all the resources are going to be applied. Right. And I don't think those Or maybe they don't necessarily own it, but they have basically full authority, th so they might as well be the proprietor. I think pure communism is they own it. Okay, like, fair like, enough. Like, yeah, and, and capitalism in its purest form is that the property is owned by the individual who has the right to do whatever they want with it. Gotcha. Right, and again... Because I always have kind of assumed it as like, okay, in a communist society, you own it as long as you do what, you, you, what we tell you to do. Well, and that's, right? in, the, like, that's in the so implementation, right? I mean, is it that's really why it, ownership? But that's Probably why not. it fails in the implementation. Like, in its purest form, that's not true. It's not, gotcha. it's not that I dictate how you own it or how you behave. Right. It's, that you, it's that it's owned collectively. And capitalism in its purest form is you can do literally anything you want with your property well, without regard that, to... That's a little different, right? That's free market, right? That, that, that's more of it's a free not, market. It's, I think it goes because, beyond free market. Because your free market says, hey, like there's no regulations, right? The capitalism is just about who owns it, right? Th capitalism so is... That's why people often will say like free market capitalism. Free market... They'll say no regulation to do what you want with what you own, right? So for instance... I, uh, we own a car and we could use it for Uber if we wanted right. to. And so there's a certain amount of capitalism that's involved. But then the government might say, oh, well, you can only use that car. Make right. it, making up an example here. They, they might say, well, you could only use that car between the times of 6 a.m. and midnight. Well, we don't need to make right? up the so example. The so government there already market, says. There's no free market there. The government already says. We don't even need to make up an example. The government already says in order to operate a vehicle, you must be qualified to do so. And we're going to give you a license that says right. that you're qualified, right? Um, it also says that just because the speedometer goes to 250 miles an hour doesn't mean that you can whip down your local side street at right. 250 miles an hour, right? Right. And, and that's where the difference is, right? I do think that... that I think it's a misnomer to say that free market is pure capitalism. I think free market is close to pure capitalism, but I don't think I think true pure capitalism goes even beyond what a free market. Okay, so would we're, so we're 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 a little bit odds here right. because my understanding of, of capitalism is really based on ownership. My understanding of the free market is based on regulation. To right, make it the most and simple. the free I think the free market you is know? the interchange of what you own. Right, so, it determines the free market determines how you can operate or sell what you own. And so somebody could make the argument, they could say, well, this house that I own, I got a really nice house here, and I do I own it? Well, yes and no, because I have to pay taxes on it. If I don't well, pay taxes, then the government can come and take it. Even, even so more do so. I actually own it? Because a lot of people will make the argument and say, well, you're, you're kind of renting it from the government in a sense. And, and because they're the ones assessing how much its value is. And that's the, way that all, that's the way that law has progressed from the Middle Ages. That right. It's based upon who owns the land? But and doesn't what... that violate self ownership? Um, no, because your self stops at your like in, in its purest form doesn't extend to the land you're standing so on. So today, it extends we, to you. So 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 let me let me break the fourth wall again here. So today, that uh, Steve and I we worked on a fence at my house. You can't see it; it's not in sight, and I'm not going to show it to you. But we worked on a fence, and I'm not going to go into the details. But we were able to put up one whole panel, <laughs> one. just one. Like, it's crazy, right? And it's because I'm being a pain in the ass about how I want this fence to actually be constructed. I want to note for the audience right here that I'm not disagreeing. Right, right. He's, he's <laughs> like, I'm being a pain in the ass. And, and some other friends have been like, dude, so, so like, why are you doing that? I'm like, because I want it, right? And just to, just to give you an idea, I have a shadow box, pre-built shadow box fence that I purchased from the local store, from Lowe's. And... What I did was I decided that I wanted it to be mounted center of the post. Okay, well, it turns out it's not designed, designed. to be it's not designed. It didn't. It took me like a whole day to figure that out. Whatever, give me a hard time. I don't care. Right, but so I I want it to be a specific way. And so rather than take the panels back because I wasn't I I wasn't in the uh, I I didn't feel that I wanted to go ahead and build it uh, from scratch. So I wanted to use the panels. So I said, all right, well, I'm going to go and buy some router bits, and I'm going to basically more tease. I'm going to make a little hole in you know, the specific areas on the post 
so that I can just simply slide the fence panel right on in and then screw right into the post. Okay. Now you might be looking and saying, DL, that's a lot of work. And Steve is probably saying that is a lot of work. And this is why we only got one fence panel. However, now to go on to our example here. So this fence panel, yeah. I look at it and I say, I own that fence panel. Sure. And I own it for several reasons. Right. One, I did the work with the job that I have. My wife did the work with the job that she has to acquire money. So right. somebody basically gave us money for our work, for our labor. And then we took that money and we went over to Lowe's and we said we would like to buy these fence panels. And Lowe's said, okay, well, we basically did all the same thing. We used our resources and our capital sure. to acquire these particular fences and somebody somewhere along the line built the fences and used their capital and their time and energy and they sold right. it to Lowe's who sold it to me. Right. So therefore it is now in my possession. So I look and I say, I absolutely own that fence, uh -huh. right? I'm, I'm, I'm pointing over here because that's where it is in the darkness that you can't see, but I own this, this fence panel, right? And so I look at it and I say, well, I, uh, you, you know, when it when it comes to uh, self ownership, it extends not just to my body, but to the things that my body produces. So I produce the labor or the services, both a little bit of both, sure. for the company that I work for, who then provided me money that was based upon the labor and the services that they provided. On board, and then I transferred that money to Lowe's, who use their labor and services to build the fence and then sell it to me. Right. Right. So therefore that fence is effectively in some sense, no different than my body. Now it sure. is very different because like if my neighbor comes over and smacks it with a hammer, it's much different than if they come over and smack me with a hammer. Correct. Right. So there is a significant difference in that sense. Um, but there is a serious uh, a reality to the ownership is being coming from my body, even if it took a few steps to get there, right? right. Like I worked for it, I got the money, I bought it, but you know, and then 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 you and I put it up, sure. right? And then you came over as a friend, you offered your your services, you know, for some coconut water and some dinner, yep. And uh, you, you know, you you put it up, and then we we're now here we are sitting and having a cigar. Dale's house has great food, right? We do, we have great food. So if you're ever in Jacksonville, come visit. Seriously. I have great food. I'm a great host. I promise you. I'm awesome like that. Okay. But anyway, so I look at it and I say, you know, all these things are part of, <clears throat> are, 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 they extend from self ownership. Sure. Right. And so, therefore, like my house, if the government makes me pay taxes on it and can take it away, then do I really own it? No. Can you take my fence away? Well, that's a good question. You Even can't. let's let's stay no, let's stay in the concept of self ownership, right? You didn't install the fence in a vacuum. Are you saying I didn't build that? Well no. Because we're about to get feisty here. I'm, no, I'm not there. <laughs> I got a different point. All right, fair right? enough. Um your neighbors agreed to let you place that fence. You're placing it on the property line more or less. You know, right. I, so let me do you own the lake? No. Right. So if the people that own the lake, you, you purchased your home, right, with the expectation of a certain view and a certain right. access, right? The people that own the lake have the right to deny you that access. They have the right to put a wall up so you can't sure. see it. Sure. Right. You've your neighbor purchased their house with an expectation of a certain view. Right. Your fence is potentially going to block their view. So where does your neighbor's well, right to self-determination? In, 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 in this, this case, case right, we, you we agree. It out it's agreeable. We're actually well, we're replacing, a fence, yeah, we're right? replacing we're, a fence that was there before. Yeah. But, but, but if it like was when no we fence. talk about when we talk if about there was zone, no fence like, there previously, well, right? We'll talk about like zoning laws around fences, right? There's a reason that there's these zoning laws because there is a right to a certain expectation and the value of your property and the and the the things that you purchase the property for. The value of your property would drop if the view of the lake was removed, right? Um, the value of your neighbor's property might change if they expected their patio, which has a clear view in this direction, changes their view of the dock down the right. way, right? Where do those rights to self-determination come in? Where does that affect this? And that's why I think, again, 
if everybody agreed where everything was and agreed that you own this property and you can put up a fence and even if that detracts from your neighbor's view well that's your neighbor's problem not your problem if the people that own the lake decide to block your access or drain the lake and build a skyscraper right there you know that right that's legitimate within the Correct. right of self-ownership right yes and but the question is that affects your right to self-ownership too that affects Does it, though? it affects it affects it because, its immediate impact it, it, to the value of your property because we've already agreed that i don't have the right to look at the lake uh, right? I don't know that I agreed with that, but okay. Okay, well, I, yeah. I, I, that's kind of where I took your conversation yeah. when you said they could build a wall. They could build a wall and say, hey, yes. you know what? It's on our property. We're building a wall. I don't think and, they have the right to and, build a wall. And, okay, so, okay, my mm -hmm. misunderstanding. So I think that they actually absolutely do have a right to say, you know what, um, DL, so we have, a, um, uh, we have a voluntary HOA. Right. And so if I was not part of the HOA, they could say, you know what? We're going to build a wall so that you can't look at the lake. Because you know what? You didn't want to pay your dues. So therefore, we're going to build this wall. We're going to put this wall. And if you start paying your dues, um, then we'll take down we'll the take wall. The wall down. I totally agree with that. Now, I agree with that in the sense that it's their right to do. Now, do I think that's a good thing to do? No, I think that's kind of a crappy thing to do. Right. right? Like, and, and I might and that's my criticize point. them for it. That's my but I would point. not try to stop them from doing it. Right? That's interesting. So that's where I would draw the line. I would say, you'd well, suffer I can't a stop real financial doing. loss if that occurred. Well, so so that's very interesting because... I think right now, the way that we look at property values, since that's what we're talking about, is really in the context of the current environment that we have. So the current environment suggests that, hey, if my neighbor has a couch out on the lawn next to the truck that they've got on cinder blocks that's rusted out, right? Like that's going to impact the value of my home. It is. So here's where it gets interesting, right? So one of the th ideas that is very common in the libertarian community is that you don't have the right to your own reputation, okay? So I could walk around and I could think that I'm a nice guy, but other people could say, well, he's totally an asshole. Sure. He's a total dickhead, right? And uh, there's not much I can do about it. Like, okay, well, you know, whatever. Now, it's not that I'm powerless because there are things that I could do to change that, right? Sure. There are things that I could do that um, would at least change enough people that you have one segment that says, hey, he's a total dickhead, he's an asshole, and another segment, a larger segment that says, what are you talking about? No, he's not. Like, he's, he is an awesome person. Right. So, now, you agree with that? I think so. Okay. To that point. Should that not apply to my property? I don't know. Is I... not value of your property its reputation? Um, you know, you're, it's, that's getting into that perfect world again. Um, is it really? No, I don't think it is. We're already there. I, I, mm, you know, to like, to we continue, just talked about to, it. Like you continue, have a re house has a reputation. Right. To continue the analogy, right. They build a wall in front of your house. You add an extra story to your house. Right. And then black your neighbor, your neighbor's view over there. Right. I mean, where does it stop? Right. Where does, where does that tit for tat type of behavior stop right. right and and well i fundamentally agree with your right to your property and i have some difficulties with how we apply zoning laws and especially hoas from a personal perspective um it feels like neighbors taking too much interest in what i might do okay um at the same time we're people and you may not be a malicious person but a malicious person could have one neighbor put up a fence and then they decide they're going to play loud music specifically right. and direct speakers in that direction. I believe there was a case recently right. where exactly that thing happened. Right. And that gets into some serious complex issues about right. like sound and flow right. overflowing into their area. Right. You know, that so, gets, you know, and I'm not terribly familiar with those. I'll be honest. So, so we don't have a, the problem is, is that while we can agree that there's a fundamental right to self-determination and that you have a right to do what you want to on your property, right? What we don't have are the right tools or better tools than laws, from my perspective, is a better way to describe it, to address that tit-for-tat behavior gotcha. that leads to just a total disintegration of civil civil right. So conversation, I, right? Like, 
the next step eventually is somebody gets attacked with a baseball bat in front in the street in front of their house. And I think that's a bit of a leap. And I think well, that when we're if you really start going tit for tat, I if, don't think it is. <laughs> if, if we're talking about zoning and property and what people can do with it, I think we already have some examples. And I believe it's Houston, Texas. They have some because, interesting points of view in Houston. Because I believe that Houston does not have zoning laws. And They're I believe it's the city that I saw that greatly reduced, yes. There was a, a gentleman who had a property, he had a house, not a property, not not, not just any old property, it was right. a house. He literally lived there. And right next to him, um, an amusement park popped up. Right. And so he literally has like roller coasters. I mean, not literally in his backyard, but they're basically in his backyard. Right. So when he goes to sell that house, he's going to have that perception right. of his home. But why? In the same way that you would have a perception of your person. And here's but the he thing. didn't do anything. But here's the thing. Here's where I'm going with this. Some people are really rough in nature they're 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 they're, sure. they're they're they come across difficult right but people like them anyway that's right not like ability isn't not necessarily a, well, 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 right it's it's it, 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 it's a reputation right and i'm i'm applying the idea of reputation to a person to reputation to a property right so you you know you have this property and it has this reputation reputation is hey it's got a lot of loud sounds because there's an amusement park right next right. to it we actually have them in other cities where there are zoning laws because I've seen houses built right next to railroad tracks. Of course. And, uh, you know, where there's a road going. And so there's a stop, you know, so it's not just a train coming through. It may be like the dinging of the bells and the lights flashing. Whistles in your backyard so, are so down right in so line. even worse than just a train coming through because now it's a train coming through and it's all these lights and bells, right? And that is a reputation for that particular property. Sure. So if you buy that particular property, you are accepting that reputation in the same way that if I act a certain way towards you, I am kind of accepting this reputation, right? And that reputation precedes me. I now, think the interesting thing is that reputation, if I talk to you and I talk to Sam and I talk to Bill and I talk to Jennifer and Susan and so on, you know, all these different people that are really not here. There's no, there's no people here. I just want to point that out. But if I talk to all these different people, I'm going to get a reputation amongst all of them. Right. Right. And then. If Bob over here says, man, he was a total asshole. Every time I talk to him, he's a fucking dickhead, right? And then all these other people that I just named might say, really? Because I didn't right. get that impression. So likewise, somebody might say, well, it's not so bad living next to an amusement park if you think about it. And they might say, well, here's the reasons why. Now, there's 320 million people in the country. You can probably find somebody. That's it. There'll be somebody that says, I don't care. Or, hey, you know what? I think it's awesome. I, I know they're not going to operate at 2 in the morning, so that's cool, right? Like, they're going to operate until, like, maybe midnight or maybe 1 a.m. or, you know, maybe a little bit late. But there's a certain point where I'll be able to get to sleep. And so that my person might say, you know what? I really enjoy the sounds of people screaming. And I get to watch just people just, you know, it's just I find it fun to watch. I, right. I wouldn't find it, but there might be somebody. Right. I mean, I, there's got to be somebody, right? And so I feel like what, what, what's happening here is we can extrapolate this idea of self-ownership and our reputation, and it extends. I don't really want to say extrapolate. It extends. Everything is really an extension. It extends to the property that we own, the things that we own, right? I think – so my problem with that point of view is that I'm less willing to accept – that restriction upon myself being applied to me by my neighbors, right? I'm less comfortable with the idea that my neighbor could build an amusement park because they wanted to right next door. And I'm going right. to seek an environment where that's not possible, whether it's enforced through an HOA right. or through a governmental requirement. Right. But then when I do that, then I'm ceding a certain amount of ownership, right? I'm ceding a certain amount of my personal right to the HOA. I'm ceding a certain amount of my self-determination to my government. But aren't you always... Of course, we live. We don't live in. A, we don't live in a vacuum. That's we, my point. If we have zoning laws, you are ceding a lot of things to them already. I'm not an island right? unto myself. But if you if you do it with an HOA, you are also ceding. So I don't see a problem with. So we have a voluntary HOA here, right? right? And the HOA can say, all right, the lake is our ownership. We own the lake, and I um. And so, therefore, nothing can be built on it. 
And then I can come into the neighborhood and I can see, well, you know, there's, an, how, there's a homeowner there, there's a homeowner. And I can actually look and I can say, all right, it looks like everybody in the neighborhood is homeowners. Right. And, and people do this. I would like to live in an area that is predominantly homeowners because right. homeowners have a different attitude toward the places that they live in than do, say, renters. Right, or landlords, right? yep. And, but somebody who's renting might say, you know what, they will take some, um, they will allow, I, I'm trying to think of the words here, a person that's renting might say, I'm willing to cede some of the benefits that I would otherwise get as being a homeowner for being a renter for whatever benefit that I think I'm getting. Right. Right. Maybe they maybe they like the idea of, hey, I've only got a one year contract instead of a 30 year contract. Right. right. They may enjoy that. They may, you know, for what, you know, it, there could be any number of reasons why they might want to rent. And I've, sure. I've met people that love renting. Sure. And, for a uh, while, I did. People that are like, hey, I don't want to rent. I want to own a damn home. You know, I want to own a home because I want to be able to do whatever the hell I want to the home without right. having to ask anybody except for my wife, which is an entirely different story that is totally not Again, within the context of any liberty anything. That is literally, no, just kidding. I don't know. But uh, no, so, but, but I don't want to ask anybody else, right? Like, I don't want to ask anybody if I can paint my house, you know, purple, which I would not do because I think it's a nasty looking color. But I, I don't want to have to ask anybody. You know, and I thought about painting my house and I love the idea that I can paint my house, which is right now a brown that I don't like, to some colors that I think would be more, uh, more pleasing, right? You know, uh, and so that's one of the reasons why I own this home. That's one of the reasons why I own this home in this particular neighborhood, right. because of the makeup of the neighborhood. And I don't foresee, you know, anything happening that would cause me to regret my decision. But why don't you foresee anything happening that would cause you to regret your decision? I would argue it's because of the laws and the and, and, and other I would say that we that can replace laws you. with an HOA. We can replace laws with any number of other other situations that maybe haven't even been thought of. But I would ask, so, okay, that are more voluntary. So we re we replace laws with an we replace laws with an HOA. How does the HOA enforce its agreements? You need a contract. A contract needs to yeah. exist in a, in a structure of law. There needs to be interpretation of the words and the the forms of the contract right. and an expectation of what's a legitimate contract and what's not a legitimate contract. Right. And that's where and, law comes and, into play. And, and and I don't have a problem personally saying. If we have a law that says, look, we're going to enforce contracts. Sure. As opposed to we're going to tell you what you're allowed to do and not do across, like, say, the whole city or the whole state or the whole country. Right. And this goes back to which laws are the right laws and which laws are the wrong so laws. So I look at it and I say, you know what? I can move to a neighborhood. And, and I have I've some friends that live in some HOA neighborhoods. And I'm like, I've told my wife, I'm like, we're not living there. Right. I, I, will, I will throw a fit. I will make, I will stomp my feet and I will become a 43 year old man child before I live there. And sure. I will, I, you, you, you know, you know, that's where I'm going to, you know, we don't Draw really do this. Yeah. We don't really do this whole patriarch thing here, you know, but um, we do recognize that each one of us sometimes has our own, you know, like, no, boundaries. we're not, we're not budging on this one. Right. right? Boundaries. Like, does, does that right. work? Boundaries. So, um, and, and, and so when we, when we, before we bought this house, before we bought the house that we lived in before this one, right. I told her, I said, I am not living in an HOA because I'm not going to have an HOA come across and tell me you need to put a plant here. Right. And I've had friends tell me that they got in trouble right. because they didn't have a plant. You didn't have the right plants area, in front of your house. You know? And I'm like, no. Um, and you know, and if I end up living there, I've told my wife, I'm like, expect that we will have a lot of fighting with the HOA because right. I will be a pain. You think I'm a pain in the ass as a husband from time to time? Wait till an HOA tries to tell me what to do. That's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and got something useful from it. Drop me a comment from wherever you are watching from or hit me up on Twitter at Liberty Dad Pod. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out other associated podcasts over at facebook.com forward slash free speech media network. You can remember, and remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time, and I'm out.